So an observer pattern in Unity is really helpful when you want an event to happen and you want other people to subscribe or listen to those events. And it makes everything neater since you don't have to have everything in one script. Everyone can kind of piggyback if they need to. So it's a very clean way of doing that. So in this case, Joe, when he turns into a beast, I want there to be particles playing and I want the music to start playing for beast mode. And then when he's back to a stick, I want it to turn off. So I already have the camera with an audio source and an observer A script. Inside of this script, I have the reference to the audio source. I have the functions to play the music and to pause the music. And then in my beast form, I have the particle set up. So the idea is I'm going to set the particle to active and then I'm going to deactivate it when I'm back as a stick. So in beast form, I have the reference to the particles and I have functions to show them and hide them. So in our form controller, I want that event to be initialized. So it's going to be a public event and of type action. And I'm going to call it on beast form. And I'm going to make one for stick form as well. So these two events, I'm going to put them in here, which is when we're actually changing it. So if on stick form is not equal to null, then I'm going to run on stick form. And I'm going to do the same here. So if the stick form or beast form have no subscribers, then it will be considered null. So that's why I'm putting that check there. So let's do the particles first. In the particles, I'm going to add a reference to the form controller, and I'll call it controller. If this was a singleton, it would probably be easier, but just for this case, what I have, um, I'm just going to assign it here. And then on enable is the good practice for observer patterns. On enable and on disable, you want to subscribe and unsubscribe. So what that looks like is on enable, you're going to check if the controller is not null. And then I'm going to say on beast form, I'm going to add a function. So in this case, show particles with no parentheses. And you'll also see that um, if I put a an event, it shows you that it's an event with a little lightning bolt. So on stick form, I'm also going to subscribe the hide particles. So that when I go into the stick form, it'll run this function. And when I turn into the beast, it will run this function. So I don't need to do anything in the form controller. It doesn't even know that beast form exists in here, in like the particles. So that's what's really useful about it. You don't need scripts being aware of each other. So it makes it really clean. And then I'm going to assign it here because it's not a singleton. Womp, womp. So now when I press Q, it should show my particles. I'm in beast mode because if I attack, you'll see I'm in a beast. Now I'm a stick. Cool. So now for the music, I'm going to do the same thing. So in the main camera, observer A, I'm going to get the reference to that form controller. And then on enable, I'm going to say if the controller is not null, same thing. Then find its on beast form and then assign it a function. So I want it to play the music. Okay, and then the same thing for the stick form. Pause music. So you can see this right here is the piggybacking. This is the big manta ray. This is the big mama, right, from Finding Nemo. And all of these are the little fish that just piggyback on top. So whenever the, the manta ray does something, everyone else can just tag along or jump off whenever they want. So I'm going to go ahead and assign Joe right here to the main camera. So now if I hit Q, not only do the particles play, but the song also starts playing. You can see I'm in beast mode still. Everything is working. There's no errors. Hit Q again. It just stops it. Stops the music. You're back to a stick. Boom. You can obviously blend the transition, do whatever you want. But the gist of it is that's how you can use the observer pattern to have those types of 
interactions between your scripts and it can be very useful and the last thing I will go over is just how to disable and get rid of them so uh, the cleanest way so that everything doesn't pile on let's say this observer or the beast form let's say Joe dies his game object gets destroyed something happens you don't want errors occurring so on disable you want to also check if controller is not null then controller dot on beast form minus equals show particles and then controller on stick form minus equals hide particles so that you're unsubscribing when at the end of this life cycle life cycle all right so that is a simple implementation of the observer pattern in unity